for joining us our virtual lender student panel. And I will be the panel today. And I'm also four great panelists. We're also all current lender students and we will all introduce ourselves uh, in just a little bit. But how the structure of this will work is if you have a question, feel free to put it in the chat. I will be monitoring the chat and I will be relaying all those questions to our panelists. And you can ask us anything uh, you see, lender related, um, you know, campus life, classes, co-ops, whatever it is, we are here to answer your questions and provide you with insight and just talk a little bit about our own student experiences. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started with introductions. So as I mentioned, my name is Charlie McKenzie. I am a junior majoring in marketing and business analytics from Mason. Um, my most active student organization right now is Linder Ambassadors. We're actually, all the panelists are in Linder Ambassadors and we act as the kind of recruiting arm of the Linder College of Business and we events such as this. So that's probably what I'm most actively involved in right now. And then why did I choose UC and Linder? So being from, it's about 30 minutes away from campus and I knew that I wanted to stay close to home. And so I was looking at a lot of schools, um, you know, in the Midwest, ultimately what drove me to Linder and UC, and I'm sure you'll probably hear this a lot, but it really is true, was our co-op program. Um, I'll actually be doing my fifth co-op uh, this summer. And so I've just gotten so much, you know, amazing experience being able to do those co-op in my time at UC. And I know that they definitely prepared me to, to enter the workforce when I graduate. And then also as well, um, just being in Cincinnati to study business, I think is so important. It's a great city to study business because we have so many Fortune 500 companies here, so many resources and so many great alumni that can really do, um, launch your business career. So those two things um, kind of culminated and it made me want to enter UC. So with that, I'll pass it over now to our panelists to introduce themselves. I'll go ahead. <laughs> Um, so my name is Samantha Goebel and I am a senior, so I am graduating this May and, you know, going to figure out how that graduation will look this year, but it'll happen for me. Um, and I, well, oh, my majors, I am an international business major, marketing major with a minor in professional selling. And I came to UC actually because, well, my mom made me come on a tour, like Charlie, I live about 30 minutes away and I was like, no, I don't want to be so close to home. Like I want to get out. And then my mom was like, you need to go tour UC. And I fell in love. Um, I fell in love with the co-op program and the flexibility of it. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I saw co-op as an opportunity to explore that and also study abroad. I've gotten to do a lot of study abroad opportunities. And when I was listening to current UC students talk as a high schooler, I was like, wow, I want to be doing what they're doing. So it really sold me. And I got excited to come to UC because of that. Now that I'm here, one of my biggest involvements is in Student Alumni Council. So that's the organization where we work as the liaison between students and alumni and help with events like homecoming and other really cool opportunities to engage. So I've had five years here and they've been truly incredible. Um, love it, loved every minute of it. So that's me. Hey, I can go next. Um, hey, I'm Ion Mehta. I'm a second year majoring in business economics and business analytics. Unlike Charlie and Samantha, I'm not from 30 minutes away. I'm from Dubai, so slightly further away. Um, my, I guess my most um, involved organization would probably be Lunar Ambassadors. I think I have to say that. Um, no, but jokes aside, um, I love getting back to high school students rep representing the college and just talking to high school students since I was in your position a couple of years ago. So um, it's is very relatable. I'm also very involved in the economic society since I'm an economics major. So we talk about current events and have panelists, have speakers come in. So that's another one of my big involvements. Why I choose UC? It's a pretty interesting story. Um, Cincinnati is not very popular outside of America. I never heard of the city, never considered UC. But my dad's sister lives in Cincinnati. He told me to apply. I didn't want to apply, just apply to please her. I applied, I got in, still didn't want to come. but. I guess the turning point was the international admission counselors who really wanted me to come. They constantly followed up with me, um, connecting me to different resources, alumni to talk to. I think that was the turning point. Just talking to different people, um, researching about the college. I think that's one of the hallmarks of Linder and UC as a whole. The staff and every single person you encounter really wants you to be there and is going to go out of their way to help you. So that's me. Okay, I can wrap it up. My name. 
Abigail Armstrong and I'm a third year here. I'm studying finance and I'm originally from Gahanna, Ohio. It's a suburb of Columbus, so I'm about two hours away from Cincinnati. So I got a little away from home, but I'm still close enough. Um, the student org that I'm most active in right now is probably Business Fellows, which is a student org designed to support underrepresented students in the College of Business. And a big reason of why I joined UC was actually because of unique organizations like Business Fellows. Um, I just really thought it was awesome to come into a college where it's a lot of new people and I al already had these sort of sort of communities where I could get to know these people and I kind of already had like a family looking out for me. So UC is a really great option because of all these unique communities that you can join. And then also I have to say the co-op program is pretty awesome. And that was definitely a deciding factor for me too. Hi uh, guys, I can go next. Hi, I'm Christian Wall. I'm a first year majoring in business analytics and finance. I'm from here in Cincinnati, Ohio. I actually grew up just about 15 minutes away from UC's campus. Um, outside of Linder Ambassadors, I'd say my biggest student organization involvement is with Students Consulting for Nonprofit Organizations. That's a really cool organization where we get to work directly with local nonprofit companies and kind of help them overcome different problems that they're going through. Um, we do semester long projects, it's a great experience. And then why I choose UC, I'm actually a third generation very kind My grandpa went to UC, my dad went here. So I kind of grew up with the love for UC. And then when it came time to decide, hearing about the co-op uh, program, just how students are averaging, you know, making close to $10,000 of co-op, just seemed like a great place for me to come, get a professional experience, and also just set myself up for a great career after college. Awesome, thank you all. So that is just a little bit about our backgrounds. And now we'll open it up to you have um, in the chat and I will be fielding them to all of our panelists. All right, so we can we can go ahead and start off with if you all could please just um, you know talk about uh, where and then what did you learn from them? I guess. Uh, I guess not. You can go. Yeah, you can go. Okay. Um, so um, I'm a second year, so I had two co-ops so far. Um, last summer, I interned at a law firm in Dubai. Um, it was a market analyst intern position, so just a ton of market research about different industries that the firm could enter into or consult with. So it was pretty cool to be in that legal space. But one thing I realized is I don't want to be in the legal space, and that's where co-ops are really important too. They tell you what you don't like too, and you don't want to be stuck in the same field after getting a full-time job for 20 years and then realize that. So that's been really happy to have done. Um, I'm currently interning Great American as a data analyst intern, um, and I'm going to be there full-time over the summer too. Uh, I can go next. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm just the first year, but I actually had the opportunity this spring to start working at Great American Insurance. So I was working you know, between 10 to 12 hours a week in addition to being a full-time student. I'm working in their data governance division as a business analyst. So I kind of get to work um, in their mainframe database systems and just inputting new data from the transactions that they go through. And it's been a great experience so far. I'll be carrying on full-time through the summer. And I'm just kind of excited to keep going with that. Um, I'll go ahead. So like I said, I'm, I'm a fifth year, so I've had um quite a few co-ops and what's kind of neat what i think the best thing you can gain out of my experience is that i've really moved around a lot within like not just companies but within the specific positions i started off and i was doing marketing for chick-fil-a and then i switched over and i was doing um finance and accounting for a company called Baratour, which was truck parts and then i was working on electrical connectors doing product management and then I switched finally into sales and I've had a couple of sales roles and I really learned that that's what I like. I like the people facing like side of business. I like being able to share what I think is exciting about a product and help other people learn and then it in turn. 
So it's been really neat for me through co-op. Like, as I said, I've done all those different positions and I'm so grateful that I didn't jump into a finance role because I would be terrible at it and I'm happy I did it as a co-op and not as a graduating person going out into the workforce. So it's been really huge for me to have those experiences. And then I was even able to get a full-time offer from my most recent co-op with Luxottica. So they're in Mason. I actually ended up not I ended up not taking it, but it was really cool to know that I had that and I could have had it eight months out from graduation. So I could have had that stability. I didn't choose to take it and now I'm like, oh, <laughs> but it's still, I have lots of opportunities and it's been really neat to go through all that. I can talk a little bit about um, my co-ops. I'm a third year student, so I've had four co-ops and it's really crazy um, just thinking back. I've learned a lot from each and every single one of them. So it's kind of hard to sum up. Your first co-op is always just a huge learning experience because it's your first time in the work world. For me, it was working at Fifth Third Bank. So I had to dress up for the first time because it's the banking industry. And just like having my own cubicle was really like, eye-opening. I, like I was really an adult. So that was just neat. Um, I would say my most recent co-op, I actually co-opted abroad in Singapore with a consulting company called Brand Finance. And this was a really interesting learning experience for me just because I was getting the cultural aspect and like the business aspect all in one. Um, I had really good coworkers who were big on letting me get to know a lot about the company and like what they do on the business side, but also just like fun, like getting to know me and getting to know like how it would feel like to work full time in a company. So it was definitely interesting to see how that works. And then also just having the opportunity to work abroad in itself was very interesting because I got to see firsthand how international business works, like how the U.S. affects um, other economies and I guess just day to day little nuances and differences between cultures. So I'd say my most recent one was probably the most interesting and a lot to learn. And just with like what's going on in the world right now, it was interesting to see how all that kind of played out, not only in like society, but also like in the workforce, how their kind of work was responding to it um, versus like what I guess we were doing back home. So it was very interesting to say the least. Yeah, and I can kind of read my co-op experiences as well. Um, after Freshman year, I worked at Kroger's headquarters downtown in a supply chain role. And Ion mentioned it, but co-ops, they give you a great opportunity to learn about what you like to do, and then also maybe what you don't like to do. And so it was a great opportunity. I loved the team I was on, but that's that corporate ops wasn't really what I wanted to do. And so I then um, transitioned to my smaller company in uh, Walnut Hills, men consulting, and did some work, consulting work for them. When I realized that I really wanted to go more analytics and so i actually switched my major to business analytics, and then i worked that summer at a marketing research firm in cincinnati called ipsos doing some um marketing research and on one of their projects for them realized that i really enjoyed the, the marketing research side of things and so i actually added a, another major uh marketing and so and then in the fall i actually was um, in new york city working um for the daily show um in a production role so that wasn't necessarily as business focused, but it was something that I was always interested in pursuing. And so Leonard did an awesome job allowing me to go pursue that and it counted as a co-op and I was able to get some great experience um, kind of following that. And then this summer I'll be back um, doing research for 8451 downtown, which is a research company. Um, oh, so going back more to that side of things. And so it is a great way to test run things and get an understanding for what you like and then also what you don't like as well. Awesome. So please, if you do have questions, okay. feel free um, in the um, section over here. And then, so we'll just keep on going. Um, I want to ask analysts, why did you choose your major? I can start it. I actually switched my major a lot coming in. I was originally international business. And then um, I ended up adding on finance. And then I had my first role in like 
formally a business analytics position. So then I thought, oh, since I'm doing a business analytics internship, I should probably add business analytics. So then I had a business analytics minor. Um, and then I got another co-op and tried out accounting. So I was an accounting major too. But then you kind of learn when you're like actually working out in the real world, what you do and you don't like. So I had taken like my core accounting classes and I was keeping the business analytics um, along with the accounting and finance, um, just kind of tacking away at that. But towards the end of my co-op rotation at Ernst & Young, I got the opportunity to work on a more accounting heavy team um, rather than what I was doing, which was consulting. And that's when I found out that I didn't like accounting. So that's when I ended up dropping just down to finance. Um, and really that's made all the difference because with that, I feel like I'm able to focus more. Um, it's way easier to look for jobs and I kind of know where I'm pivoting. So for me, it was definitely a sense of trial and error. I tried out a lot of different majors. I always like gave the classes a shot, but I was really struggling in like some of my accounting classes and I wasn't passionate about the field. So it was just a smarter move for me to drop down to finance where I was more into it. I understood it more, I was better at it. And like the actual work was exciting to me. So I definitely recommend trial and error, a lot of trying, a lot of, mistakes but at the end of the day it's all worth it it's all good experience and you get to know like where is the right choice for you and like what's going to create the most opportunities for you yeah i totally agree with that i can i chose my major as well and i kind of answered it in the last question but it really was through my co-ops i actually came in um as an operator honestly not knowing exactly what that was um, I just thought, you know, maybe I, I kind of like math. I don't really know exactly what I want to do, but maybe just is something that I want to do. Um, and then from my co-ops and actually, you know, trial running my to figure out that I really like the marketing research and consulting space. And so it's totally okay when you come in and not know exactly what you want to do. I'm sure, you know, all of us have, have changed their majors. Um, and so that's totally okay. You know, from taking classes in your first couple of years, you'll take something called business core and so you'll actually take introductory level classes to all majors within Linder and so you'll really get an understanding for different types of disciplines from that and then also just when you get some co-op experiences under your belt understanding what you like and what you don't like um, really allowed me to realize that I wanted to do marketing and business analytics. Yeah, I can go ahead and go next. Sorry. Um, kind of like Charlie said I really didn't know what I wanted to do coming into college so I ended up deciding just to declare business analytics and finance just because I wanted to have something next, but no real reason. Um, having my first job right now working at Great American, it's in a business analytics role. I realized that I really do enjoy doing that. So that's something that I want to continue to build upon. And that's why I really enjoy the co-op experience because you really get to test drive a major, see if it's something you want to continue to do going forward. So I know that I want to continue with that business analytics. And I also have finance declared just because I was always a math guy through high school and especially now in college. That's something I've enjoyed doing. So I want to kind of work to pair those business analytics and finance degrees and potentially move those into something after college, like a financial analyst. Just to add on really quick. Also, what was super helpful was that um, I reached out to a lot of people just um, in the process of choosing my major and like really tacking down what I wanted to do with us having such like a close relationship with the businesses in Cincinnati and like whether it's through co-op or just networking within the college, it was really easy to not only talk to peers that have the same like interests as you, but also like people in the actual workforce. I know I talked to a lot of people who have maybe been working for 20 years full time and like talking to them, like one of the biggest one of the questions that I always asked whenever I was like sitting down to have a coffee chat with someone was if there was like one thing you could go back and do in college, like what would it be or like change? And a lot of them would say, oh, I would have added this major because it sounds really cool or like, oh, I would have learned this skill because it would have helped me a lot like 
now and I could have saved some time. So I highly encourage people to like always network as much as possible because you can learn a lot from that. And I even talked to a couple professors, whether they saw a fit for me like, within certain majors and like if it would be a nice opportunity. So that was always super helpful for me. Um, I can go. Um, so I had a broad idea for where I want to go down with Boston. I wanted to take um, through high school, actually. Um, I was an economics major, so I took a few economics classes in high school and I instantly fell in love with it. I love the way world markets work, the stock market works, and how different things affect pretty much everyone around the world. So I kind of fell in love with that through high school. So coming in, I declared economics as a major, and I'm still true to that. But I had a business analytics minor, which I, a bit like Christian said, I just had that next to my name because I didn't want to go in with a single major. I felt like having another minor will give me some more credibility. But after freshman year, I realized that I wanted to convert my business analytics minor to a major. Um, and that just ties in what everyone said. Um, going through classes your first year, talking to people, you throw up experiences. Um, I realized that business analytics would fare very well with economics since I want to get into the financial world in the future. And the future is pretty much technology now. Wherever you go, especially in finance, you got to make models, et cetera, et cetera. So having that tech knowledge, I felt would be beneficial to me in the long run, which is why I added that major. Um, and currently on my co-op, um, like Christian said, I'm also doing a lot of uh, data analysis where I'm using my business analytics major uh, in the real world. So that's nice to know. Uh, I'm also doing a certificate in business French, actually. Um, I took French to our high school. I just enjoyed that. And when I came to college, we had a language requirement. I had two classes to take, so I took French. And I just needed to take two more classes to have this business French certificate. So I'm like, might as well. So let's see how that goes. Not to be redundant, but yeah, just to echo those points, I've had a lot of different majors in my, on that line next to my resume a lot. So I've had OM, finance, I had Spanish in there at one point as a minor and just, you know, it kind of came down to between co-op experience, again, networking with people, as Abby said, that was huge, talking to people, understanding what the different majors actually meant and being able to work in those roles and then take the classes. I was just kind of able to narrow down like, this is who I am, this is what fits best, and this is where I wanna go. So it's been really neat to get that well-rounded experience to figure all that out. Awesome. Again, please feel free to ask us um, questions in the... Um, I'd like to now ask the panelists about your experience. Um, could all tell us about your first year experience and then what do you remember most from it? I need a moment to think about this one. <laughs> So many memories. Just because I'm finishing up my first year right now. I think the biggest thing about the first year is that it's going to be a huge growing experience. You're going to be constantly placed in positions where you're going to be uncomfortable in professional settings where you probably never were during high school. And ultimately, you just get to grow through those experiences. I know personally, during project strategy, it's a project you get to work on the fall of your first semester. You get paired up with a local company and you do a SWOT analysis on them, which is where you look at their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I was actually paired with Great American Insurance, and it was just during the first couple months of school that I was downtown in their main office building um, at the very top floor where they have all their executive meetings. I got to meet with the president of one of the divisions of Great American. So I think that was just a great opportunity for me to really start to myself, not so much as just a teenager who just graduated high school a couple years ago, but really start to gain confidence in those professional settings. And that's something that continues to carry out through the rest of my first year and I know will continue to build in the future. No. So for me, I think the biggest thing that I carried from freshman year was the people. Um, whether that be fellow students, faculty, staff, it's really incredible to see over the course of five years how my core group has kind of remained the same. The people I've lived with, I went to class with, I'm still friends with today and I know I will be for a long time. And from there, we've all branched out and brought more people into that community. And then you have people older than you and younger than you. And it is just so neat because everyone is fun. Everyone has something different to the table. And what one of the neatest things is just being able to learn from one another through projects like Project Strategy or just sitting in a classroom and listening to someone else present. You're like, 
wow, they're so composed. That's cool. I want to do that next time. And then you're able to bring that into your next presentation and as you move forward. So I think that that's really the neatest thing being able to reflect back is just the people. I mean, it's really incredible. The community we have at UC and within Lindner specifically, it's so strong and you just feel like you can find your place that you belong and you thrive in. And I think that everyone feels that same way. So. That the people as well. So every single freshman who comes into Winter is actually placed in a learning community. So you're going to be in a or an LC around 25 other students. You take classes with them. You also work on those projects that uh, Christian was mentioning: project strategy, innovation, and impact. And for me, that was one of the best parts about my first year experience. Was when I, when I came into college. You know, you don't really know a lot of people. You're still trying to figure some things out and, and go with the transition. And just having already a group of 25, of 25 other students who you're working with and you can hang out with and collaborate with is great. Um, I'm still great friends with everyone in my learning community. We all um, keep in contact. And so that's a great way to make that transition into college easier. Just having that kind of group that you're working with and spending a lot of time with when you get in. Um, I can go. Uh, I think for me, my biggest takeaway from freshman year was the opportunities we had that Linda provided. So not just the project strategy, innovation, et cetera, but the networking events for me personally were um, a big growing factor. Um, we had a lot of companies coming in, presenting, um, having a lot of information sessions, like um, local companies just come in, want to talk to students, meet them, um, spread the brand, so to speak. So there are so many events like that throughout the course of the semester at Linder. And if you want them, they're out there. It's all about going in there and making the most of the opportunities. And I remember my first semester, my freshman year, I put on a suit more times than I did the rest of my life combined. So it's just an opportunity, just learning more about different companies, what you like. So for me, that was definitely the biggest takeaway. And I think my favorite memory was living in residence halls. Since like Samantha said, um, I, I'm sure I'm going to be close with my freshman year friends throughout college and beyond. And just being able to live independently, having to get my own groceries for the first time, and a vacuum, et cetera, et cetera. But just that independence and doing things yourself teaches you a lot. And I think that was a lot of fun too. I think my biggest takeaway was kind of finding my own confidence and getting comfortable because when you get into the groove of college, there's so much thrown at you and there's like, a lot of different ways you can be pulled so it definitely takes a lot of stumbling in the beginning but i'm huge on community and at the end of the day it really were it was those different communities that pulled me in and like encouraged me to be myself and like they also encouraged me to like go after these opportunities and stuff so i kind of fumbled through the way I, at first i was convinced I like had to follow some like strict way like every single interview has to go like this I have to ask these types of questions and then like at a certain point I was like I'm not comfortable doing this like I need to just go with something that's a little more comfortable and a little less forced so I really think freshman year was just a huge like learning experience I remember one interview I had I look back at it now as a fond memory but like during that moment, it was awful. I, it was the only interview I actually like started crying, but it wasn't because I was sad. It was because the sun was hitting my eyes. And after, like in the moment, it was very bad, but like the interview just like lasted off. And like, I walked out of it, like I got the job and I was like, that wasn't so bad. I literally did probably the worst thing that you could do in an interview my freshman year. But like, it wasn't the end of the world. Like. I still did well at that. I was still able to recover. So I feel like really getting comfortable and confident in myself was probably like my biggest turning point for freshman year because it took a while. I, I definitely like first semester, even though we were getting a lot of exposure to um, companies and like networking, I definitely was not comfortable with like how to talk but like it's funny how much you throw yourself and like the more you push yourself to go the opportunities you start getting more comfortable you start figuring out what works best for you and like how to um talk to these people that you might be intimidated by um so that was just like really neat to me and it's funny like being a third year now i feel like it's just interesting to look back like first year like oh why was i so scared of doing all these things but it was cute. <laughs> there it is.
is the next question kind of segues into that. Um, I know Ion and mentioned this in their responses, but um, where did all of you live your first year? Um, if it was on campus, and then also what was your favorite part of that and why? I can start out. I lived in Morgan's Hall, and that was when like Old Lindner was literally right across. So <laughs> wake up five minutes before your class, you brush your teeth, and then you just walk over there. So I think that was my favorite part was being so close to Lindner because I spent a ton of time there, and it was just nice. Like, hey, let's like get a quick study session in at Morgan's um, right before we have a big test. So it was nice. Like, you literally can leave class with like a group you're like learning community because at the time that's who I did everything with and be like okay let's like cram really hard in the study room and then like let's just go bounce back over to Lindner so I would say that was probably my favorite part was how close it was to everything. I think that would ring true for all of us. Um, I lived in Morgan Hall too my freshman year. Um, woke up 10 minutes before class, roll out of bed, walked into the 8 a.m.s. So it was definitely um, a good thing to have. But for me, I think the one thing I was most surprised about was how nice the residence hall was. Coming into college, you have this picture of how residence halls and dorms are going to be um, dirty, just to live in, nothing more to speak about kind of thing. But when I moved in, it was an apartment. And my I remember my parents telling me that it was like a hotel suite. So it was a really, really welcome surprise. But yeah, I enjoyed living down my freshman year. I can go next. I also lived in Morgan's this past year and it was a great experience. Like they mentioned, getting up and being able to wake up a few minutes before class started. We're all out of bed and be in class by the time we got started. But I think the most, what I enjoyed the most was being located on campus. Just there's always something going on nearby. I know there were days where in the fall, I was sitting in my room, it was maybe like Saturday afternoon and I wanted to go do something. So I'd get some friends, lived in the dorm with me and just go out into the Sigma Sigma Commons, which is a big green space we have. And we would sit out there and maybe throw a football for a little while and just get to live next to all the, your best friends. Really is a great experience your first year. Yeah, I was also in Morgan's. It was great to roll out of bed. It was fun to hang out with everybody. Um, and I think like in general too, what was neat about living in the dorms and having a meal plan was just like, you lived together and then it was like, you got to go eat together. And so you just kind of were always in this herd of people walking around doing things or like going to run stairs at Nippert. It was just a fun, it was fun to be surrounded by that many people who always wanted to go be doing something else, so. Yeah, I didn't realize we all, we all lived in Morgan's freshman year. Um, I definitely echo that. And this is definitely true for for all residence halls um, at UC, but my favorite, favorite part about about dorm life freshman year was that everyone just kind of had their open at all times, and it was really just like one big community for your floor. You just kind of kind of walk into the room and hang out with them, and everyone was just down to um, few people and kind of have that like freshman experience together. And so it was a very fun environment, just um, going to people's rooms, meeting a lot of people, and then just kind of that independent living aspect as well. It was a lot of it was a lot of really great. Um, kind of time of me too. Awesome. Um, on to our next question. Who's your favorite professor and why? That's tough. I can go first just because I absolutely adore this person, but my favorite professor is Professor Crawley, who ironically enough teaches accounting and I did terrible in her class but I really got to know her because she was the like first professor whose office hours I went to and right away she was just super personable to me like I met her kids I'm pretty sure when I was in the office hours um and it was funny because after that connection like just going to her office hours once I sat in the front row of her class and it was like every day she saw me like said call me by like my first name and it's funny I took that class freshman year but even in my third year, I've had no more classes with her, but I always go to her office to talk to her. And she's been somebody that has helped me through a lot of 
um, big decisions in college. She's just always kind of been a mentor and just like a support system within the college, which is nice to have that person because it's someone who can give you like nice, credible advice, and, like write you recommendation letters, but also it's someone who like, if I ever needed a breather, if I was ever like having a bad day within Lindner, I know I could like email her and she would like invite me into her office and like I could just take a breather and like let off steam and like tell her what was ever on my mind. So she's been super influential to my, I said, college experience. Like I don't know where I'd be without her because she just like cares about her students on a different level and like being able to know her, she like really just helps me out in all aspects like not just like academically but like professionally and personally she's always there to make sure classes aren't getting the best of me this is a really hard question i think that we have a lot of incredible professors and i'll go with someone i've been able to take twice professor hassey and she i've taken brand management with her and uh, management advertising management so both were marketing electives which went towards my major and she is just this amazing lady she is so passionate about what she does she's worked for png she's worked for reebok she helped when she got her mba from harvard she helped like implement this whole system of kind of like implementing volunteering into the business school of harvard which is just amazing that that's something she was able to do um but with that, like, it's just the things that she does in the classroom. She starts every day with a little mini quiz about kind of what's going on in the world, whether it be with like, you know, whether it be with NBA basketball, she's a huge Duke fan. So if it's March Madness, we're talking about March Madness at the beginning of class. So you're immediately engaged and you're excited. And then things I learned from her class, like not to sound like a complete nerd, but I will talk about them in social settings because it's like neat things that you analyze with the commercial and then you're like, whoa, that is so amazing. So. And beyond that, she just cares about her student. To know your name, if you back, consistently, she wants to talk to you, she engages with you, she wants to spend more time with you. So I think it's really neat how well-rounded she is and how much she just genuinely cares about the subject that she's teaching and also the students over there. I can go, Okay, you can go, Kristen. I can go. So right now I'm taking a business law class with Professor Burrell. And it's been my favorite class my freshman year so far. Um, I think he's a really cool teacher because he's also a practicing lawyer. So as he's teaching us, he doesn't really draw or teach from the book. He teaches from his own personal experiences and how he's seen what we're learning play out in his own life. And I think that's been a great way to engage with us because it really makes it interesting and it allows us to see how those laws are being applied in real world settings. In addition to the way he teaches, he also gives us weekend challenges every class, which is like something fun to go do over the weekends based on his own life experiences. It might be some music to go listen to, maybe be thankful for something that's happened in your life this past week, or reach out to somebody who you haven't talked to in a little while. I think having his class has really helped give me a new perspective, both on business law and just yeah, so I remember my first semester, I had a ton of incredible professors. I had a favorite professor. I'm like, this is definitely my favorite professor. No one's going to come close. And every semester so far in college, someone has managed to come close and challenge the title of favorite professor. I think that's the coolest thing about Lindner. I haven't had any average professor. I've loved every single one of my professors. They all care so much about their students and what they do. And you can see that in the way they teach. They're like kids almost getting excited about their work, coming to classes and just disseminate information. I think it's an awesome thing. Um, but my favorite professor probably um, is a professor called Charles Apadu. Um, I'm taking finance class with him this semester and he's wicked smart, so that's a given. But I think what he does outside of just the traditional learning is what sets him apart. He's always available to talk to students after class. He stays back. He gives you extra review sessions and He's always available to his office hours to just talk for live, give me advice about different co-op opportunities or like help on your co-op potentially, just like what a lot of the people already have said so far. And he's always hard you investing since he's a finance guy. So he's always giving you the in knowledge. So that's another cool thing. But yeah, a lot of these professors have been there, done that in that field. He's He's been a finance professional for 30 years. So he knows what he's talking about. I think that's a cool thing learning from someone who's been there done that and you're just 
I guess, trying to learn and make your way in the world. Yeah, I totally agree with all that. I think that Linder has all amazing um, professors in faculty, but um, yeah, I would say my professor would be probably uh, Professor Rapine, my freshman in IS. Um, very, very passionate about IS. He made all the lectures like very engaging with all these take different um, like gadgets, the technology that he had to make the uh, lectures more fun. And he's also someone in this who just really cares a lot about about students and was. His Connect with very approachable and it just goes for all for all lender professors. Um, they're all very willing to engage with you, um, you know, talk to you, help you, and they're all great. Um, so I have another question, and it is one. Um, it is what are you all been at home right now during this uh, current situation? I gave into the hype and binge watched Tiger King. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that was a good one. I don't know how I feel about it. There's supposed to be another episode coming out this week, but I've been uh, feeding into the gossip and I heard it's supposed to be a reunion, so I don't know if I'm too excited to watch that. I would need some more actual content. Yeah. Yeah. I also watched Tiger King. Watched that as well, yeah. Uh, actually, I've never seen the off series. Like I've been watching The Office recently. I think I made it through the first three and a half seasons in like two days. Slowed myself down a little bit, but I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I've been binge watching The Office too, trying to get on the hype a few years late. But um, I'm watching the show called Money Heist right now. It's a really popular Spanish show. It's about a heist. Um, it's on its fourth season right now. The season just came out this week, so that's pretty interesting. Well, I got one. into Ozark. Which is... Oh, sorry, no, Sam, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. I'm like, my thing is delayed, I think. Um, I started watching Ozarks, which is kind of violent, but it's good. <laughs> I also have trouble finishing TV shows, so I stopped at, like, part of the way through season two, so maybe I'll jump back in at some point here. <laughs> I like Tiger King as well and need some more some more content too, so I might have to might have to check out Ozark out. Um, here's a question back about Lindner. What is all of your impressions of the Lindner community? I think we've all touched upon this in some way or the other in all the questions we've asked so far. But I think one word to describe the Lindner community would be family. Everyone's willing to give back. Um, be it students, faculty, and alumni. Um, like Abby said, I've sat down with a lot of alumni, people in um, the corporate world already had coffee with them. And one thing that they're all willing to do is give back. And one thing you'll realize is very few people say no. Everyone's more than gracious to give back because they've been in your position and they just want to uh, pass it down and pass it forward, so to speak. And that's when they realize very quickly, no one wants to put you down and get ahead. Everyone's in this together. And everyone's success is the community success, and that's just the most beautiful thing about Linder. They want everyone to do well, and that's something you see in all the students and all the faculty. Everyone is helping each other out rather than being a cutthroat environment or only I do well, I don't want anyone else to do well. But yeah, just being able to lean on other people's support. Yeah, I would definitely echo off of that. It's almost like we're all competitive, but we're never competing against each other. It's more of like, competing against like just some unknown opponent like it's never like oh i want to beat you out for this position most of the time it's like let's like practice for this interview together like i talked to so and so recruiter and found out this like we kind of just like swap and build each other up um also what's really neat is just how I would say like humble everyone is. My freshman year I was really scared to ask people for help. But the crazy thing is like everybody is so down to earth and just willing to help out. Like I remember once I got over that kind of fear of like asking people for help my freshman year, I walked out with like 20 different mentors, like just upperclassmen that <laughs> all called me their mentee and stuff. So it's really neat to just see how like everybody's willing to like pass down their information and kind of help lift each other up along the way not 
necessarily competing against each other, which I know is common in like a lot of other business schools at other colleges. Like m most people are just like plotting against each other, it's like trying to go for the same type of roles. And it's just like not a community where you really grow, but I think it's the opposite at Lindner. Yeah, I agree with all that. The word family really is a family and it really like I learned I could ask anyone anything. No one was going to judge me. They wanted to help me. That was a game changer. And um, I think it's really neat to be surrounded by that many people who truly care about each other and everybody just wants to see everyone succeed. Yeah, I think continuing to touch on that sense of family. The club that I'm working right now, I was actually because there was an older student who had worked at Great American and put me in contact with somebody with a recruiter from there that was looking for a spot to fill. So I think just that idea that everyone's willing to help each other out, no matter what's happening, is really something that's unique to the earth. Awesome. Yeah, I completely agree with all of that. And we actually have a question. Rachel, touch on your question after that, but Rachel is asking your favorite study spot. I can go first for this one. Um, inside the Linder College of Business on the fourth floor, there's the Count Study Attic. And that's somewhere where I would go. I had a bread free time between classes. It's just a big open space with lots of tables and places to sit down and get some work done. And it's normally pretty quiet during the days. So that's where I'd go and get a lot of my extra work done during free time. I'd say yeah, my well, favorite. Oh, Abby, go ahead. Okay. I'd say my favorite study spot was um, this because I love wasting my money at Starbucks. Um, and that's also like just where you would see everybody. So I would study um, while the classes are going on. But as soon as like the classes are switching, then I know it's like a swarm of my friends are going to come in and like I can say hi to them really quick and like take a little break from studying. Plus, coffee is always needed. So Starbucks is definitely my favorite. I'm so glad that they put that in the new building. Yeah, one of the really cool features um, that I is, is actually uh, a few of the floor, um, like counter seats, actually these counters that kind of run alongside um, the halls that kind of looks down into the main area um, called the atrium. And that's a really cool spot that I like to study on. A lot of different seating options. There's so many areas in the new building, especially to study. And one really is that all students can actually rent out different study rooms. Um, there's an application called 25 Live and then you can like rent out a bunch of different rooms and so there's a ton of uh the new building to, to study yeah i think going off of charlie my freshman year i was a bit odd in the sense that i loved studying in my room in my dorm it was just quiet i just enjoyed being close to food or my bed if i wanted to be so that probably wasn't the best move but it is what it is um but this year with the new building it definitely changed the game with the amount of conference rooms there are you can um uh, rent them or just book them out for a couple of hours like Charlie said or invariably a lot of the time they're just empty you can just walk in with a group and that's very convenient when studying for exams I remember I had an accounting exam recently and we had like 10 15 people just getting together and just studying together going through practice questions bouncing ideas off of each other so that's a really cool thing to have yeah I like that countertop space they have plugs at like every seat and I am the type of person that I always have something that's not charged so it's like a computer is plugged in and a phone's plugged in the computer and my headphones are plugged in too so i love being able to sit there it's kind of busy but also like i have my headphones in so i'm zoned in and that's my favorite spot this is um a question from asking is there anything you wish you knew before going to college i would go back to the point um, that I think a couple of us have touched on about not being afraid to ask people for help. I, I truly do think for me that if I would have just learned earlier to put myself out there, um, I would have gotten places quicker than I did because once I finally got over that fear of feeling dumb because I was a freshman who didn't really know what was going on and I just learned to start asking questions and I realized like, no one's judging you, everyone wants to help that. That was huge. So I think just like learning that and also learning that like, that doesn't mean just asking upperclassmen or faculty, but like 
your fellow freshmen because you all are kind of in the same boat that you're a little like and so it's like if I would just know I'm like don't be afraid to ask you're not alone there's probably someone else with the same question and if you ask it actually you're probably going to make a friend out of it because they're going to be like wait I'm confused too <laughs> like help so that's something that I wish I would have been told yeah one thing that I wish I would have going to college importance of like forming relationships with your professors. I know during my kind of first semester of college, um, even my first year of college, I just kind of would to class, sit down, uh, and email the professor if I ever had like regarding a certain assignment, but really professors are there to help you. And a lot of them, as we all mentioned when we talked about um, some of our favorite professors, well, they all have amazing backgrounds. They're all very calm, very intelligent. And so it definitely is very beneficial to have relationships with them, we have coffee, with you know, try to build relationships with them because they're really there to help you and they will, you know, they'll connect you to any, anyone else um, in Lindner and are just great resources for you. Mine is very similar to Charlie's. I just wish that I knew the importance of making connections, like not only with professors, but just like within um, businesses, like coworkers and peers, just really having, um, that kind of importance. When I was in high school, I put a lot of focus on like things that you could write down on paper, like my GPA, or, like certain like test scores and like all those kind of requirements, which don't get me wrong, are super important. But like I was at the point where I would look at an application and see that I didn't meet those standards and automatically count myself out. But it's like the longer that I spent time in college, the more I saw that like those numbers and stuff are usually just like guidelines. Like if you have a strong enough relationship and like if you prove that you're a hard worker, like most of the time you can actually still get like those positions or like that co-op or into like whatever um, situation that you might need. And I guess I kind of like counted myself out of a lot of stuff early on just and like wouldn't even apply to things because I didn't have whatever number um, on a piece of paper, which is like very important, but also just equally having like relationships and like not getting discouraged and being able to still like put yourself out there is huge. I think that I wish I knew that you can make your best friend in the classroom. A bit similar to Charlie, I just went in my freshman year, went to class the most part, listened to the professor and left. but. Very soon in my second semester, I started talking to my peers a lot more. And that's when I realized they're as nervous as I am. Everyone just quiet, still a freshman, still doesn't know what they're doing, trying to figure out the whole college thing. And just knowing that we're all in the same boat together and just talking to them, you have a study partner and then potentially a new friend. And that's where I made a lot of my best friends and we're still together a few years down the road. So, yeah. Yeah, I think one thing I wish I knew it's just that your first year, you're going to be surrounded by new experiences and just being open to those experiences. You're probably going to make friends with people you never thought you'd be friends with. You're going to be in situations where you wouldn't have seen yourself a year earlier and just being open and trying to just absorb as much as you can and really learn from all those experiences is amazing. Yeah, definitely. And um, I want to be cognizant of everyone's time. I know we have until starting to get to that, that time that um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up on our end. I want to thank everyone so much for tonight. Um, I really hope that, um, you know we answered your questions and that you learned something. Um, and also, I want to thank all of our panelists as well for for um, being on it today. And with that, um, I know that Melissa um, has an update for everyone, so I'll turn it back over to her. Thank you, Charlie, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we do have kind of in this challenging time a virtual visit webpage where you can get more information, see more videos. You see Charlie a couple more times in some of those videos, um, and there is an option for you to um, contact our office or sign up for a time when we will um, be able to reach out to you one-on-one. -on -one. If you're an admitted student um, in here and you are interested in utilizing the app ZMe to connect with our current students, um, UC just went live with that profile a couple of days ago. So I would recommend that as well. 
But again, thank you all so much for attending. Um, and we hope that we hear from you soon. Otherwise, have a wonderful uh, Wednesday afternoon. Thank you all.